वेलकम टू ग्लोबल एजुकेशन वेबिनार पावर्ड बाय ग्लोबल फाइनेंस बोर्ड So today I gotta start the session of um, internal audit, a very basic one, um, and what we need to do in terms of auditing in ISEC. Content that we are going to go through today gonna be the first. We're gonna go through the definition of internal audit and some like some some noted point in ISEC. Then we gotta go through internal like how important it is. The process and the procedures of internal audit in ISEC. Uh, internal auditor, uh, yeah, like the profile of people who can become the internal auditor, um, the audit tool, audit preparation, auditing scope. Because when we have the term auditing, like it's a P in our mind. There's a lot of different type of of audit and. Some type of audit tester and scope only, um. So we gotta go through how many type of audit do we have and like the scope of work, and then we gotta go to the very popular type of audit, which is external audit and then legal audit, and the we gotta go through the auditing status of um ISEC globally, uh, which is uh, recorded via the um, global finance board survey of the. Last, like the quarter three of 2017. Okay. So, uh, what is internal audit actually? So internal audit, by the definition, because like in in any term related to auditing and related to legality, uh, we need to say a very very like exactly and details in terms of definition so that we will not miss any um like any points or any scope. Um, so internal audit is defined as an independent, objective, assurance, and then consulting activity designed to add values and improve an organization operations. It helps an organization accomplish its objective by bringing a systematic, disciplined approach to evaluate and improve the effectiveness of risk management, control, and governance procedures. Um, so normally in your entity, you can see that like we um, can manage things well and comply with all the regulation. Um, but like I, I just want to imagine and recall in your mind like how good your LC is doing or like how many, how good people is delivering a chain to EP or TN. So in which way we gonna like uh, measure those. Like how good it is, um, and when when we think up the questions, is it based on the fact or number or just uh, like we feel good generally? So that's why we need a concrete documents and um, and report to show that uh, what where we are good at or like to to show that um, like how actually we good it is. So. The internal audit serve as catalyst for improving an organization's effectiveness and efficiencies by providing insight and recommendation based on analysis and assessment of data and procedures. Um, so normally, the way that ISEC and other organizations doing is we have like tie up regulation and um, we have compendium, we have um, guidelines, we have tools, something like that. Uh, and in in ISEC, the interacting space between, um, how to say, like the top management team to the very like low like member, uh, we we do have a lot of interacting space. However, in some some other organizations, as I as my experience, um, most of the communication way is via the document, um, the instruction instructions and tool. That's not really like in person instruction. So the chance to to have the mistake is really big. Yeah. So that's why we need internal audit, like do things. Like um, periodically to really see if there any mistake or like the way that um, like mission or vision or guideline communicate from the very top to down 
whether it is like clear or like it is strengthened. Um, besides, and in some organization, um, especially for those organizations that they need to submit um, and they need to submit tax to the government, um, they usually use internal audit um, as a like initial step before the external audit coming and uh, to make sure that like all their document is comply with the law and everything is clear. Um, so that is the practice of internal audit that I, I have experienced. Okay, so in the next part, we got to go through the process of internal audit, which is constituted, constituted by eight steps. Actually, it's, it's a very long and complicated process, and it actually depends on the how big your organization is. Um, how complicated um, the process and the procedure of everything like within internally within your organization. Uh, so for people here, I would love to know that like if internal audit happened in your entity, so how long did it take to complete everything? Uh, can I hear from Sandra first? Everyone's still healing me, right? Uh, yes, so for Lithuania, um, there was uh, no like internal auditing like since since like one and a half year we didn't have um, like any 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 kind of body that would like, help us do it. Like now we have revision commission, but the work is like kind of just started, so we still didn't go through the first audit. Oh. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, okay. So the audit process and procedures like can last, uh, how to say, like up to three to three months, or like in simple, it it can be like shorter. Um, so it's again, it depends on the the organization itself. Um, so we gotta go to one by one about the process. Uh, so for the planning stage, we gotta prepare the plan. We gonna um, have to say like in term basically about the characteristics of the auditing process is quite similar to the process that we we do any kind of project. So the in term of characteristic is purely project management. Uh, however, we add in some point that um, has its own nature of the auditing. So we start, we always start with planning. Uh, we prepare timelines and areas which will be audited. Um, so in GFB internal auditing soon, we're going to have the area that we need to tap in. Um, and then we schedule an open meeting, begin with the audit. Set the date for audit. Communicate to people who will receive, who will receive um, the present, uh, blah blah blah. So that is the first stage. We we initially set up everything. Um, the, then we're gonna have opening meeting. So we're gonna just get the plan. We have the time frame. Uh, take into consideration of the potential timing issue. For example, like normally, I think um, the more people you engage in any meeting, the the more complicated it is to become the um, the, the the trouble in terms of arranging or scheduling. Um, so you may consider whether like how many people you engage into the the, the meeting, so that it's gonna be like effective and it's gonna be like less complicated and cost your efforts less. Then we gonna do field work. So the the terminology field work is to uh, like normally is talk about someone come or like to visit the reality um, that like the actually happen in the business or in, in anything we do. So we review manual, we review learning um, 
process testing policy and procedures, laws, regulation, and assessing the accuracy of the control. And then we perform the activity mentioned and explain in GFB internal auditing tool. Um, the fourth step, we're going to communicate uh, to the LC or um, yeah, so communicate about the amount of operation to LC and then we keep in touch with EB, MC team. Like this is the the stay that auditor gonna do and then we're gonna do report drafting. So um, before we publish the report, we gonna have um, like some points that we need to point out and for this one there's a one principle that we uh, bring it to LCB, MCBB finance and we inform every mistake in advance before like the official one is published. Um, so we then we have closing meeting to re report um, to discuss about the, the auditing report opportunity to discuss um, and the remaining issues. So for this one, it's actually like cut me a little bit about the formats that we do with external audience. Uh, so for let, let me say in external audit, people are more likely to like depends on the rating and the opinion of the auditor to evaluate like any type of um, an organization. So it's really important. That's why we have so many layers uh, for like before the actual report is coming, like come out to the the, the audience. Um, the very last step, number seven, we're gonna have report distribution. So at this stage, we need to really consider who gonna receive the report, um, and like um, yes, so it's mainly like like that and then we deliver the report and the last part uh, we uh, check on the action step from the report were implemented uh, with the MC or LC we might considering like some further step because there might some mistake that we, we, we investigated and we suggest the next step what we gonna do uh, for like for the stay and defy the schedule for next um, internal audit also. So uh, for this very complicated process and also engage a lot of like different stakeholder and parties. So who should be the one who are eligible to um, to um, to perform such a task? Uh, from the suggestion and like from the principle of internal audit task, the one should be an independent person and he or she should have experience in finance and in ISAC. Uh, he is also have the basic level of local and national bookkeeping procedures and auditing process knowledge. Uh, for this one, so there's mainly four points. Um, the last part, which is auditing process knowledge, is I think it's quite simple. Like just from my very objective opinion, um, because this one we can teach the the first one, the independent person, is the point that we we can consider between many options. But the 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 second and the third one is very important because um, it's really hard. I have to say. To be honest, it's really hard to find these people, and usually, as as, as so far as I know, uh, I think alumni can be a very hard to say like good person, which match with this one. So um, again, we still we still can get a lot of um, opportunity to get internal auditor which um, has a lot of good knowledge in terms of knowledge, in terms of finance, in terms of everything. However, these two, like the two uh, profile which is experience in finance and ISAC, uh, and the experience with the basic level of local and national bookkeeping procedures should be seriously considered.
and then we gonna have uh, like for internal and like for local level and national level we can have um like more specific profile and yeah so for this toy uh, as you went through we might have one party here good is uh which is ecb so ecb uh as its name, which is the controlling board, entity controlling board, um, and their task, their characteristic that they need to perform is quite similar to the task that an auditor is performing. So ECB can be a good choice to become a member in internal audit board. Yeah, and then we're going to have audit tools. Um, so you, when you come to um, our official um, resource, okay, which is IIES, uh, that is it. We can have a lot of material. And some like auditing tools is still available there. Uh, the last one, which is P by GFB 1617, um, we can see that uh, like some entities, so as far as I know, which um, for example, Mongolia, they are trying to use the tune, and I, I think this is quite useful and helpful to the entity um, who still have like not really standard, um, how to say, like standard tune for to using. Okay, so I gotta go to the part that um, we gonna prepare for an audit meeting, um, which is a lot of material to prepare. So the first, you need to prepare documents from legislative meeting. Um, so usually it's, it's a minute, and it's record everything like systematically, and you can see like what happened in the past. Um, you should have here it said you, you prepare all your accounting documents for at least five years but from my experience it's very very difficult to get on the accounting documents for example like invoice receipt reimbursement bank statement can be because it's always available in the bank that you have a bank account there um, so uh, you should have five year maximum but if you don't, at least you need to have uh, your previous term, because um, like everything in ISEC, we we do it like quite periodically, and so anything happen with this this year, uh, are more likely to happen like with the same cycle. So having like one year period is very useful for you to compare year over years um, comparison mm. and you have every transaction in the bookkeeping software so as far as I know both QuickBook and uh, and Wave have the features to export every single general journal um, so make sure that like the document you have and the general journal you have uh, is matched uh, and then you need to check your your petty cash um, your receivable and liability from MC from partners from LC also uh, and prepare questions like so for this one it's a combination of many different stakeholders can be into the auditor should prepare the questions and the whole LC, MC, both LCBB Finance and MCBB Finance need to really prepare about the document. Um, so next we're gonna go to auditing scope which um, including internal audit, external audit um, the audit of uh, white yeah um, so we have yes internal audit external audit we have uh, legal audits and financial audits also so we gotta go to one by one uh, for for internal audit um, 
this is a function to operate in independent from other departments and report directly to the auditing committee reside within the organization. It is responsible for performing audit with a wide range of errors within an organization. So as you read through the definition, you can see that, again, it depends on the, um, yeah, it depends on the objective and the area that the, com like the auditing committee um, define and the, um, yeah, like the direction of leadership team, something like someone like that. Um, so you can define the scope you want to audit. About the external audit, is the in independent examination of the financial segment. So again, it's the financial segment only to by the by the organization and usually conducted for statutory purposes. Um, so again, it's work with the uh, government, it's work with um, parties, authorities um, to define the right and responsibility mainly in terms of finance of an organization with the government or the nation that they are working in. Um, so, again, about the, um, the external audit, so it's also a part of uh, global membership criteria. So every year we need you need to prepare um, to like to uh, to report to auditing report uh, continuously uh, for um, that time two time for re reviewing the global membership criteria for legal audit. The purpose of legal audit is to examine the entity is acting according to the national law and according to the regulation that they are state from ASEC International or the National Compendium. So again, legal, um, so uh, let, let, let me explain this one a little bit. Um, internal, like the, the legal audit, ASEC, like currently ASEC is uh, an uh, global organization that we have in so many countries. So besides comply with the like, internal ISAC regulation, we need to comply with the regulation of the entity that we are currently working in. That's why we need the parts of legal audit. If in case that the organization that they, they, they um, was established in one country, and they um, operate in that one country only, so there's no need for legal audit because, like, always they have to comply with the legal one. But sometimes there might be some like regulation that applicable in this country, um, but it's not a. They have to comply with the legal one. But sometimes there might be some like regulation that applicable in this country, um, but it's not applicable to the other country. That's why we have legal audit, and usually it's specified for organization with um, like global characters or like operate in multinational company. And then we have financial audit. The purpose of financial audit. By the entity is following financial procedure in order. Um, so you can see that why we have financial audit and then we also have external audit here. Because, um, like for example, let me give the example of um, what currently happened in, 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 in Vietnam, usually, like in my home country. Usually we have uh, the financial report, which is called internal financial report and external financial report, because some of the expense that we spending according to the law, it cannot recognize as legal lie or like official spending. Um, for example, we in Vietnam, if if you need to recognize it's, um, like the 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 legal or like um, yeah like some some official spending, um, we need to have VAT invoice, but not all transactions that 
in core have invoice um, so that's why we just record the spending in the internal financial report only and internally within the organization we also have finance policy or we also have the finance procedures that's why we have both financial audit and we have external audit okay um, and then in terms of legal, we're going to have legal audit basic. Um, we connect with exchange responsible from about the important and expect a partnership contract, EP contract, passport, invitation letters, blah, blah, blah. So usually for this one, there are two types. The first type, which is we like, we have template, we have format that usually the, um, the contract that we do with EP but for the contract that we do with, um, how to say, like we do with um, partners, like national BD partners, we do with um, IGT partners, we need to negotiate with different terms and different services that we are going to deliver to them. So for this one, we need to like do it really carefully and again, define whether on the the service that we are about to perform and deliver to partners, whether it's in the business line or like whether the organization allow us through those things. Yeah, but usually it's now a little bit serious, but usually ISAC activity is compliant with um, the regulation of the, um, the nation or like the government usually, I just say. And we have legal audit basic. You can read through a, a material. We can have, we might have financial audit basic. You can read through. Okay, we gotta go to a very important part, which is financial segment abuse. In this one, we gonna have go through a very how to say like easy to violate, or like easy to make mistake in this area. And I gotta explain to you one by one very clearly uh, the first part let me zoom it out a little bit right okay so the first case we might recording our revenue too soon it mean we sign a BD contract and realize the revenue on the time of the signing and not at delivery of the service so we avoid by checking the contract of the delivery period, the issue of collection money, then that means that the service has been delivered and vice versa. So again, I'll, I'll explain this case. <coughs> yeah, so I'll explain this case. Normally, our BD people, like in ASEC, we try to sell the package to um, to national BD partners, like within the package, but inside that package, we gonna have like different delivery time. So you need to be very carefully in term of the we are about to deliver. So it's again you need to come back to um, the core products that we are going to deliver to, to partners. For one a very typical example that usually included into the national sponsorship is um, you speak forum or previously we had used to business forum. So the service we are delivering to the partner is more likely event organizing, right? But at the time that partners are uh, sign the contract with us is usually like far away really really far earlier compared to the actual time that you speak for room or you to business for room has happened so and and it usually combined with many other products so we need to define very clear about the product that we are going to deliver and we need to recognize the revenue at the time that we actually deliver uh, the service to the partners. This can usually happen in a very sensitive time when we have the transition between two, how to say, like two times. For example, 
1617, they go to the national partners and they say that we're going to have the youth big forum in September, for example. So the person who sells the, the product to the customer is a 1617 term. However, in September 2017, they the event has been like gonna be delivered to the customer. So the revenue, the revenue part, must be recognized in September, not in like April or May, something like that. So it is the point. It is a very typical example of recording the uh, revenue. The second part that we are going to talk about is recording bogus revenue or expense. So for for this one, um, MC sales to the partners usually I I as I observe for sure that MC is always always have more powerful in selling to it's bigger big how to say like the 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 package gonna be bigger and the skill of selling like sale person is much better than the LC. So usually LC gonna come to sales to the partners and um, however as limited resource from MC so they cannot handle everything like in a very operational task. Um, so more likely, LC gonna deliver uh, the service to to the partners. Yes, Sandra, are you typing anything? I wait for you. The second, how to say like the second typical mistake that we are more likely to encounter. Um, the second mistake is recording bogus revenues or expense, which is uh, talking about the the. Um, the case that MC go sales to the national partners and the people who deliver is LC. So in this day, we need to define whether LC um, get any part of the revenues or um, how the um, the 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 transaction or like the way of recording is recognized. So this one, MC and LC sit together and suggest in which way that we are going to record into the financial system, like into the financial, like the accounting system. Um, for this one, usually, I, I I think that like LC also should get a part of the income because they are the one who actually deliver and as then yeah an MC should get a um, bigger part because the income from this one gonna like benefit to many LC not only the LC who deliver um, the service um, so that is the case of bogus revenues or expense um, the third one is shipping current expense to later periods. So, for example, this is the case of um, situation when we spend and we pay at the end the periods. For example, with the marketing campaign or something, and then so we need to like divide. Usually, we do. Again, it depends on the way that you do accounting or like do financial report in your entity, whether it's you do by LC, like monthly base or quarterly base. And if it's, it's quarterly base, it's going to be easier. But if it's monthly, you need to divide all the expense you spend by month as long as um, the 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 actual spending, for example, the marketing campaign is in with the last month, so you can define the um, the the expense that you spend on on certain month. The fourth part is shipping current revenue to later periods, um, which is the case of um, an on revenues. In some accounting book, we call it an on revenue, which is the 
the amount of money we receive from partners initially before we we actually deliver the service but this case can happen in IGT but this case can happen in IGT for example normally partner gonna pay us in advance uh, that before our intern coming and re like perform the retrap in the company however there's the case that like sales people they come and they they they, they sell two or three JD at the same time so partners uh, they pay according to the contract values for example so for this one we need to recognize the unearned revenue and then when our intern come to um, the company and actually perform the job at that time we're gonna um, recognize it as our official revenues and the last part is shipping future expense to an earlier period um, this case we it can happen with um, the uh, let me think yeah so for example we have you speak for room and we have uh, we need to pay in advance a lot of um, material or like a lot of uh, advance for vendors but the uh, the day that we actually spend is the the dates that with which uh, this big forum actually happen so the money that we spend in advance we need to recognize is a prepared expense instead of like the the real like the, the official expense one so these are well how to say like five typical um, mistakes that we usually met in ISAC and it's need um, like strict regulation and like LC and MC finance and MCP need like, sit together and define. Actually if you take like max it take like maximum two or three days to sit together and like just do this thing only so that you can have clear regulation and guidelines and it just apply later on okay so in terms of the financial auditing basic you can read through the slide later on when you receive the uh, um, the output uh, and now we're gonna have to review a very interesting part which is the auditing standard report from consolidated report of quarter 3 2007 so you can see here this one uh, we're gonna have to like more detailed section uh, tomorrow talking about the reality of auditing and legals and exchange in in different regions uh, but you can see that uh yes the a b and m e i regions is the two regions with uh, like a little bit lower in terms of percentage of mm, the, um, the the auditing standard report um, and Americas and Europe is a little bit higher and as I have walked through the session, I am um, as I ma ma my very objective opinions again. The way and the infrastructures in A, B, and M, E, I is in the progress of developing and in progress of completing the infrastructure. In terms of uh, how we work or the regulation, and it's this um, I have to say like this depends on the nature of the country a lot actually like the percentage of the legality is more clear to say that the infrastructure and <clears throat> and something like in basic did to build in the AP and MEE country is a lot more than in, in American and Europe um, so you can see that um, how to say mm, in in Isaac maybe in Isaac this this part is even higher than in the reality but this is the fact and 
another thing is like if you see this like entity in AP and MEA region can think up whether you should like seriously think up whether you should invest the resource and the effort into uh, legality and into auditing or we need to think up more smart smarter way or like better ways by applying IT or applying some something automatically or anything to ensure that we reach and we we, we make the, the percentage of us become higher um, because as, as I said before it depends on the nature of the country so if we look at the traditional way that we work is the the traditional way that like our older people work is might no longer work in in the current state yeah so that's just the part that I want to say um, so for the later part you're gonna have uh, yes you're gonna have the chart which so in more specific of the different region like globally uh, so then and we gonna have a very quick summarize globally look back on the number So globally, we're going to have the percentage of auditing reality in the network. So you can say that like, yeah, for this one, what action that we need to take. So here are some suggested action. The first, we select an internal auditor officers for your entity with the recommended profile as above. We start storing every audit report for at least, at least five years so this one again it depends on like people in different periods or like especially in the transition mm, so if you don't receive a well transition start doing this from now so that like your successor or successor of your successor or your successor blah 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 five years later they can be proud and they can feel good that five years ago they receive a very very good transition and it is well established yeah so start doing things from now the third part is collect all the information and document necessary for audit the fourth part is start to implement adequate accounting record with um, accounting software and then start running MC financial and legal audit, starting LC and prepare the entity for unqualified external audit. This one is very important for the global membership criteria to make sure that you have it. Okay, so that's everything that I would love to say and to share with all of you. Um, now is the time to raise questions and to share the reality or like raise one of your concern. You just need to figure it out, like you need to get information that which were the professional yeah. auditors, like if there are more than one, they were doing your auditing and you just need to have like one call with them and maybe if possible you can have a meeting. You just need to tell them that like you need this data and I'm sure that they will have this documentation with them. So they will have this audit report and every supporting they will like they prepare these documents nicely because like I have done three years of like auditor assistant corporate internship and I know that when I was doing auditing we do maintain like as auditor we do maintain these documents of client. So they will have it. Okay, thank you. Anything else? Any question? From my side, nothing. Okay.
<laughs> thank you so much uh, for joining global education webinar our session our session